Welcome along to Crunching Gears, Season 3, Episode 2, Part 1. This is the first part of a two-parter with Daniel McKenna. It's a fascinating story. In this episode, Daniel goes through his early career as he quickly progressed through the ranks, starting off in small engine escorts before gradually working his way up to the 2.5 Millington Mark II. Some great highs, some hard lows. Uh, next week, part two will be out, and this is where we'll look at his time in the R2, R3, and the JWRC. So if you enjoy this, can you please like and share across all social media? Sit back and enjoy. stood up and was counted and said, this is not getting away. I remember when we pulled on our helmets and, and, and Donald says to me, what are we doing? I said, we're going for gold, Barrett. Daniel, you're very welcome. Thanks very much, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Um, not so sure how much... How interested people would be in my story, but uh, you've coaxed me into it anyway. So oh, I, it I, think, I think you have a great story. So, Daniel, growing up in Monaghan, like, you know, after Donegal, probably one of the heartlands of rallying in Ireland, was was there a keen interest in rallying growing up? Yeah, there was. Um, it was in my family from from when my, 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 when my father grew up. Um, so I was born into it, to be honest with you. Um, didn't know anything different. It was just second nature. Um, my father was a very keen motorsport enthusiast, um, along with his brother, Colin. So my father, Eamon, I'm sure plenty of people know him. And um, yeah, it was when I grew up, there was always rally cars around the house, stock cars and stuff. So my father was big into stock car racing, which is probably a bit more of an affordable uh, way to get into sport. And then um, later on, my uncle Colin started navigating for PG Woods and later on for like Des Moore and Brian, Brian McKenna or Barney McKenna as he's known. Mm-hmm. A few people they got there. And uh, my father basically got the job of looking after PG Woods' car somehow or another. So he sort of, he sort of basically done all the, the maintenance of the car, all the running of the car and then um, went to all the rallies. So PG would do a, the full national championship or the international championship. So, mm-hmm. When I was young, like growing up, growing up, there was just rally cars at the house all the time, and, mm. and then as, as you say, Monon is steeped in motorsport as well. It's probably after Lakes of Donegal and maybe you know the the monster clubs like in Cork and Kerry and stuff. And Monon would be up there, but mm. probably you know one of the busiest motorsport counties, I would say. So Monon yeah. Motor Club was a strong, strong mm. tradition as well. Yeah. And sort of your, your dad also known as Red Light to a certain generation as well. <laughs> Come back yeah, to that's right. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and then those, yeah, I don't know if Nate McGuire, I don't know how he got involved with Nate McGuire, to be honest, but mm-hmm. yeah, I suppose um, just through the trucking connection and everything else. Um, but I don't even think PJ, PJ was only starting out then, but they were both in Pinto escorts. Um, mm-hmm. I think actually PJ ended up in ex Kevin Barrett car, which was an ex Andrew Nesbitt car with two liter Pintos, and Niall had. Uh, ZLA two hundred one. Remember the Ridge, <laughs> and um, yeah, the two, the two of them for a few years battled out. But then you know, PJ sort of stayed at the same level for a couple of years, whereas Niall moved up through the the Mantas and I'm onto the that. Legacy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but I remember, yeah, my father was quite a lot of famous clips going around. I think it was the ninety two circuit. Mm-hmm. It was the one was the five day circuit, and um, for some reason, Plum Tindall kept coming to my father because PJ was a bit shy and everyone else was busy, and my father loves the limelight. <laughs> He was, he's not yeah. shy about coming forward. <laughs> no. And then there was this funny comment where, I don't know, they're doing some sort of a report, I think down in Waterford or somewhere. Mm-hmm. The clip's still on YouTube there. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, he pointed a plum and told him this red light was still on. So that, 
<laughs> got a good laugh on the uh-huh. on RPM the week after. So Red Lake Motorsport was born then for that was what that's actually what they call the team, Red Lake Motorsport. Jesus, and it's so the, the PG Woods. <laughs> The PJ Woods Rally team was that red light motorsport written on the van, jackets and everything made up of merchandise. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just come out of a bit of a joke one day. Yes. <laughs> so what's your first memory of sitting in a rally car? Um, from sitting in a rally car, I can't really remember. Uh, I know there's photographs. Um, I think when we done the Billy Coleman Award, uh, won the Billy Coleman Award in 2012. Um. Jared McCarron done a montage video and there's a photograph of me sitting in one of PJ Woods' escorts. I don't even remember it being taken. I don't know what age it was. <laughs> but I distinctly remember, like, like as I say, going to rallies was a family aff- affair. Like, you know, uh, my uncle was sitting in the car, PJ Woods, the whole Woods extended family. Um, and Marie competed as well. Um, and then my father and the service crew would, uh, they'd be heading off in the van and then myself and probably my mother would take myself and my sister to the rallies and it'd be a, it'd be a weekend away sort of thing yes. or a week away, whatever the case would be. Uh-huh. But I think we remember, um, I'm pretty sure it was the circuit of Ireland or one of the international rallies. And it was maybe in Cork or Galway. PJ was rapid, fast driver, really, really quick. Like he could match with anyone, but he was equally uh, as he was equally as reliable to put the car off the road and wreck it. Like I do I distinctly remember my father reshelling and, taking roll cages out of the car and stuff like that there. Mm-hmm. But anyways, on this occasion, he hit a wall. And that's why it sort of leans me towards being in Galway, but maybe hit a stone wall where the wall maybe give away. But of course, uh-huh. the radiator, at the time, there was chase. Okay. And uh, I just remember um, the radiator had to be changed. And I think my father, Peugeot 405 estate for chasing, uh, <laughs> you know, with the mesh in the back and everything yes. giving head up. Uh-huh. And... Uh, I just distinctly remember that they had to change the radiator at the side of, of the road, and I was just standing there. I don't know what age it was. This could have been maybe 84 or 95. So it would have only been seven or eight. And um, they had no water then to fill the radiator. But uh, this is why I keep saying this Galway, because it was, Galway was always renowned for flooding. Yes. And I just remember uh, my father or somebody, some of the guys being hung over the wall, like to basically gather up water in like in a five litre can that was in a flooded field. Yes. You know? Just and then they're like dangling them over the wall to, to fill a bucket or whatever, and then he, healing the water into the into the, the radiator, at the, the new radiator, and away. Uh, I can't remember if the finish or not, but the uh-huh. car went and yes. probably completely mangled at the front with no grill, no headlamps, as usual, uh-huh. and away. But that was a common occurrence. Like, of course, but, uh, it kept them in the rally. That was me. Like, uh-huh. I just distinctly remember it for some reason. I don't yes. know why. I, I probably didn't even know what was going on, but I just remember <laughs> this whole chaos and people being dangled over a wall, yes. and a bucket of water, and uh-huh. I probably didn't know what was happening. But that's that was that's my first memory of motorsport, to be honest uh-huh. with you. So whenever you it's in the yeah. blood, it's in the blood. Yeah, absolutely. So then, like, whenever you got your license, like, was it always going to be rallying? Like, was there an interest in football or GA or nothing really at that stage? Yeah, there was. Um, I suppose the same as any young lad growing up in a country environment. You you go to school and you you go you join the local clubs, which is the GA Gaelic football. Played Gaelic football right up. I played for for our own local team, club team, Curran and, and Scots House. And then also played for Largy College in Clonus up until like minor. I think I played some minor matches, but I remember um, we were playing a match in Duhamlet, Hamlet. People in Pomona will know where it is. I don't know. It could have been under 16 game or something. And the same time, uh, Monon Rally was on in the Glencairn Hotel in Castle Blaney. It was a Saturday evening match. And my father probably brought me to the match after the, after the work or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I just remember... Uh, you could see on you just said the main road, and you see all the rally cars being towed to the scrutineer <laughs> on the Saturday evening. And I was more interested in what cars were going on the main road than it was in the match. So <laughs> I think my father knew at that point that this boy's never going to be destined to be a footballer. He's going to, he's going to be more interested in that. But I did keep playing on for a while. But yeah, once I got my license, once I got the road, the, the license, I could start competing, and it was yeah. that was say goodbye to football. But but I must say, yeah, like right from the very very beginning, like you know, that's all I was ever interested in. I was hooked. Um, and Andrew Grennan and then I met met him with Andrew, and as my father was competing. Like my father did do rallies as well. He he, um, he stock car race for from he was a teenager right up until you know the noughties, mm-hmm. and then. And then another thing that happened was, so my father's originally from Carry Crow, which is outside of Miviel, but anyways, there was a, a Carry Crow Sports Day thing, that, and because my father and 
my uncles and a lot of people in the locality were used to stock racing, which at the time, this is like back in the mid 90s, you used to be just in a field. You just got a random farmer's field and you cut the silage on it uh-huh. and you go racing for the day. Yeah. But anyway, it's the Carrick Road Festival. My father got landed with the job of organizing stock car racing for the day. And um, or this went on for a few years. So this is like in the mid 90s, maybe 94, 95, 96. This was, wouldn't be much organization to it. Now. Like, <laughs> my father would be like, pick yeah, a field, <laughs> you know, a line out to a circle, keep the service there in the middle. and Make sure there was some sort of you know element of safety. There were a driver wore a helmet and a seatbelt, and maybe yeah. you had to put a, a door bar in so that if someone hit you aside, you know, you had some chance, but mm-hmm. complete utter chaos, you know, we can imagine. But anyways, <laughs> it was there to raise a lot of money, maybe when like a favor into the gate and there's a bit of crack. But yeah. I'm pretty sure Jared McCarron has videos of it. And mm-hmm. but anyways, where I'm from now, where my father you know, he he moved into my mother's family or married into my mother's family, and, and they we we lived in Scott's house. And then um, my father being generous like he is and my family, that's just sort of kind of us, we end up going to, then we're going to like a, a local committee meeting and the church, the chapel roof was falling down and needed new windows and the school needed this, that. So they decided to do this big fundraiser thing anyways, but my father made the, <laughs> he'd probably tell you foolishly, he made the suggestion about, geez, you know what's a good money spinner is this stock carrier and so I, this is when I was maybe only nine or ten. We didn't know at the time. He suggested to me, oh, yeah. that's a great idea, Eamon, because nobody else had a clue how to raise money. <laughs> Next thing we know, Scott's a stock carrier and was born. Um, they used the local quarry, Scott's House Quarries, as it is now. And it was disused at the time. But um, so, like, I don't know, from like 97 through to 2001, there was stock carrier and every second Sunday in Scott's House. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh ended up being really, really popular. Like, you know, I'm not saying single-handedly, but I know... Yeah. The money that was raised in that in that quarry from the stock racing was the main source of the revenue that like put a new roof on the local chapel, got all new windows in, mm-hmm. put an extension on the school and stuff. And yeah. my father was probably one of the main driving forces. Was a committee of guys, you know, all course, the stock yeah. racing guys. Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, as I say, next thing I was doing junior stock racing at ten years <laughs> old, you know. So <laughs> you know, I told the crawl initially. Uh-huh. You know, you used, you used to have to have a passenger. Um, you probably I don't know if you know John Kelly, but John Kelly was a white twin cam. Oh yeah, from yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. John Kelly, white twin. for some reason he was doing soccer race time, and somehow or another he ended up being my chaperone. You had to have a chaperone which in the junior okay. races. The only difference was you had a kill switch, so that if you couldn't drive, they could kill the car <laughs> before you crashed, probably. But but John was my chaperone for for a season or two of junior racing, and, and then I remember doing. 1300 it was all CCs, so you'd have 1300, 16, two liter, yeah. or whatever, and then yes. it'd be like bang, banger races and all this, and ladies' races. Yeah. Like my mother raced, and my auntie Patricia, she, yeah. sorry, we only, we knew us Patricia there in July, but she, yeah. she, she was the uh, Scott Stock Car Racing Ladies Champion for a couple of years. My mother was second or third. So it's just, it's just steeped in motorsport. Like, yes. So I didn't really have any other choice in the moment. No. <laughs> <laughs> you do the option, and then, <laughs> Yeah. And as I say, then my father then also, well, he had sort of PJ given up at this age. Like PJ had graduated up to like a PJ and Colin went to Sierra Cosworths up until like 96. Done a few rallies, but PJ then he had uh, him and Amri had pubs and stuff, and then they ended up going out far and I think out to Israel or somewhere. So the rally mm-hmm. stopped. But mm-hmm. my uncle Colin started sitting with Des Moore then, like up until you know, in the sleek. You remember the, oh, yeah, the exhaust yeah. Mikhail sleek and stuff? Yeah. So mm-hmm. Colin was a handy enough navigator, but yeah, then family, you know, families and everything started, and so course, they had these yeah. places to knock it on the head. But uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, my father competed a few times in PJ's cars whenever PJ wasn't using them. Mm-hmm. He also rented, I think, for his 40th birthday, he rented Mick McQuaid's escort. In mm-hmm. Monaghan 99, which would have been a good fit car. I think it was an ex uh-huh. Cattle Rogers car. Yeah. Uh, you know, two liter red top, 15 inch wheels, proper car. Like. Uh-huh. And then he, he rented Barney, Barney McKenna's, uh, Brian McKenna's G4 Escorts. Um, not sure what car that was now, but yeah, mm-hmm. good fit yeah. cars. And, yeah. and then he, yeah, around the end of the, around the time of the, well, I was in secondary school at this stage, but uh, stock racing finished up then, the money was raised, and of course then you see insurance and everything started getting in, so the holding was getting out of hand, so yeah. just knocked it on the head, so mm-hmm. good good few years, probably where I learned most of me, most of me yeah, 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 all mm-hmm. that stuff, it's loose, all loose surface, like, but you'd be an ordinary mm-hmm. road tire, standard cars, and you know, it's just a bit of crack, like, but yeah. it was great, it was, it was probably a fantastic proving ground, you know, and relatively cheap, and um, mm-hmm. But at the time, then my father ended up then building a like a rallycross spec escort. We had discovered in Latin Quarry Cross at the time, so I think okay. Calvin Motor Club at Latin Quarry Cross, which is only about literally thirty minutes from from my home house. Like, okay. so we discovered this probably around the same time, and definitely late late nineties, early nineties. And you know, 
My father then built an escort for that because he had loads of old escort bits spent laying around. Yes. He actually used to race. That's another thing. He used to race. If you ever talking to Shane McGear, my father and Shane McGear used to race up in Clabby. <laughs> uh, stock car racing. Uh-huh. Oh, from like early, from probably from the late 80s up there, early 90s. Dad had a two liter Pinto escort. And a few yeah. other guys, there was a guy called JJ McGuire and uh-huh. um, another McCaffrey guy. There were two yellow escorts there by and, in the escort. And Shane McGear had a frame. Right. Can't remember what engine he had in it, but we, one of these like homemade frames they call it, uh, okay. like a stock, like you know, like the hot rod stock car type of thing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, one of them the engine was in the back, of it. Mm-hmm. but there's no. Um, I remember distinctly Shane had no front brakes because there's no weight over the front axle. <laughs> so you only had back brakes, but they used to have mighty races up there. Like I remember going up watching it, no, but um, yeah. So as I say, I don't know. I just don't. I don't think I ever had any other choice other than no. being motorsport <laughs> or driving. You know, so there's never the. Really, yeah. <laughs> I was, I, I that's the way I grew up. It might not be blood that's running through you, it's Castro GTX, but the sound of that. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> I would say so. I would say so. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 was it always driving, or did you do some co driving at the start? No, co co drove at the start. Um, because when you're start when you're younger, like when you're starting out, you don't have driving license and stuff. Uh-huh. But, anyways, um, well, I'll tell you a story now. I probably shouldn't tell you, but I'll tell you, anyways. Um, so another local lad, uh, my father very friendly with Lorcan Kennedy, he's still a big part of our team as well. Um, Lorcan, uh, well, this was all going on, night navigations were happening as well, I should say. So PJ uh-huh. Woods' wife, Anne-Marie, she drove night navigations and Noel Hall sat with her. Back when, like, they're the proper, like, it was basically like a like a group one escort, like a two-liter non-arts escort, you know, proper, uh-huh. just proper rally cars, like back yeah. when you could have proper rally cars doing it. And my father looked after that car as well. But anyways... So we we're always steep in night navigations as well, but we never competed in them. It was only like when PJ was doing it. And, but they built past the house, you know, you'd have Andy Macro locally and mm-hmm. Damien Hagen, Arthur Cairns, and all these guys, Trevor Farrell, he had the left hand drive green escort, like you'd never miss it, like the lane green one. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And um, anyways, Lorcan was into navigations as well. And he had bought a, a 205, a, a, a PJ 205 GTA 1.9 one. And he needed a navigator. So sure, I was keen as mustard. And He'd arranged then for Noel Hall to get me less. So we, we went up to Noel Hall's house, probably the end of, this is the winter of 2001, up three or four times there. And this is before like Modern Motor Club were probably doing night navigation classes, mm-hmm. you know, to start it in afterwards. But yeah. so got learned the whole how to do plot, you know, how to do the plotting, you know, on the ordnance survey maps and yes. explain the whole thing about the time and everything else. But in the meantime, myself and Lorcan and Dad were building up the 205 and next thing came around to the January navigation. So Modern Motor Club runs four navigations and, mm-hmm. um, then we discovered, so I was only 14 at the time. And you're not allowed to have an navigator's license until you're 16. <laughs> so like we've done all this, put all this effort in, uh-huh. done the whole class and everything else. And sure, being the pure chances that we are, mm-hmm. I just lashed in that I was born in 1885. Or oh, I just changed the, the, the Yeah, <laughs> no, no, you know, didn't consider the consequences at all. And um, so I wanted to do navigation. So I, I was 14 year old, let no, I was 16. Uh-huh. And uh, I was... Turned out then, the very start of the year, Lorcan didn't know what IRDS was. He wasn't able to get his license. So I ended up doing the navigation with my father out of Bally Bay in Monaghan. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was January 2012, or January 20, 2002. Mm-hmm. That was my first event. And we won, first night out, we won the novice lap, so the fifth overall. Somehow or another, don't, don't ask me how. Remember, I remember Arthur Cairns, Arthur Cairns and Gareth, uh, Gareth Began won it. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was real bad fog that night, and sure... We didn't know any better, but I was just reading off the map and we decided not to do any plot and bash. I think what ended up happening was anyone that done the plot and bash got completely lost. Okay. I'm um, actually we're all worse off. So uh-huh. if you didn't do the plot and bash at all, you were probably better off. Better that's, that's, uh-huh. that was the case for us. Yes. So um <laughs> yeah, that's how it started. Eventually Lorcan got his license sorted. But myself and my father he started signing up for the championship morning. So me and Lorcan went on like the Calvin navigation, the Midlands, I got completely lost, didn't know like where we were, disaster. Couldn't me and Lorcan just didn't get on. Um, and then not not that I get on that well with my father either in the car, but um, we ended up doing like two or three years of navigations, you know, because uh, it, obviously I didn't have a driving license. No, um, yeah. But anyways, I should tell you later on then when I did pass my driving test, I just thought it'd be simple, just put the different date on the uh, on the license form. So oh, yes. put uh-huh. normal date of birth. But sure, Motorsport Ireland, obviously, all the records. And oh. uh, I, ended, I actually ended up doing a, I got a month suspension. <laughs> and yeah, I got called up in front of the Motorsport Ireland shirts and all and said, like, oh, I didn't realize it. But sure, of course, the insurance uh-huh. application, everything else. Oh, if I had been yeah. involved in accidents or anything else, or I wouldn't have been covered. And yes. <laughs> so, like, Jesus Christ, it could have been a bad handling. But 
we got away with it, but I didn't get away with it at the same time. I think mm-hmm. yeah, whenever I was doing it, I ended up missing a couple of rallies. Like, you know, whenever I could have done my first month on a rally. So I did pay the price. Oh, foolish yes. enough. Uh-huh. Foolish enough thing. So I missed, missed, missed my first month. I might have got a three-month ban, actually. <laughs> a three-month ban when I was 17, like, from uh-huh. much Ireland, for nine about my age. Not many people know that. But no. I, said, I was listening to your other podcasts and people were uh-huh. telling stories and I think yeah. it's harmless enough. Like, oh, yeah. I, uh-huh. Thankfully, it was harmless enough, you know, in hindsight. Uh, but, in hindsight, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I was competing at 14 when I shouldn't have been. Like, uh, I wouldn't advise it to anybody. But, no. <laughs> so your first, yeah. ti- first time then getting behind the wheel, uh, Monaghan Forest Rally. Yeah, what's, so this what's was... your memories from that day? So yeah, I should probably rewind back a bit. Um, so at this point, we had met Andrew in secondary school. Oh um, yes, uh-huh. and I knew Andrew's uncles, you know, Kier McGorman and Finton, and you know they would have been all very friendly with Andy McIlroy, whole guys in the navigation scene. And Andrew would have been going similar to myself, you know, with his uncles to the navigations. Mm-hmm. And then I recognised him. Didn't know the guy. Recognised him in secondary school and struck up a conversation. And the rest was history, as it were. Oh, yeah. So mm-hmm. me and Andrew's plan was to take over, be the next Colin McRae and Nicky Gris at the time. <laughs> Take over the world, and um, yeah, as I say, we we're lucky enough that my father had like the makings probably of two or three more two escorts laying around the house, and you know, mm-hmm. we we built a car basically ourselves. You know, literally done everything like from mm-hmm. uh, a road car shell type of thing, stripped it, done the fabrication, like put in the link boxes, the diff tunnels, gearbox tunnels, mm-hmm. turrets, mm-hmm. the whole thing. You know, we done this all ourselves. Li- literally learned how to weld by right, building uh-huh. this car. It wasn't, wasn't tidy. Don't, no. don't give it. it was a far, it was far from no words. It wasn't far from a work of art, art like. But uh, but anyways, yeah. And then we had to be sixteen hundred. So we had built a sixteen hundred push rod engine, four speed quay, English axle in the back. You know, princess calipers. Everything second hand, you know, hand me downs okay. like from the likes of Arthur Cairns and Trevor Lancashire. And my father had bits, and you know, yeah. but Jesus Christ, like we were building the car and we we're fifteen years old, like you know, uh-huh. to, like I start driving on in Latin Quarry when I was sixteen. So mm-hmm. yeah, so I started doing quarry cross events and all that kind of stuff before we were going rallying. But okay, you know, so I was doing whatever any events we could, like every single, you know, myself and Andrew and my father and everything. We and got sponsors and everything, but every uh-huh. single like. Worked every hour God sent. Like my father was working for Michael Manny's at the time, and I was a Saturday job there and mm-hmm. working for Garrett McCullough, helping him engineering. And I, I, foolishly, I don't know if it was foolish or not, but every single penny I earned went into into rally, rally car. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And every every minute the God sent was going into rally cars, like probably to the detriment of my schoolwork and everything else. But mm-hmm. anyways, we eventually got to the point where we, I, after after I served me ban, we could do a rally. <laughs> So I think Andrew and so that uh, Andrew was mad for going rally and, and the car was ready for the Monon rally. So I think Andrew and Dad done a few rallies actually to get Andrew okay. started navigating. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then eventually when I got me was got my license back, <laughs> we done the Monon Fire Rally in 05, but uh, didn't get very far. Complete disaster. Like around the Quarry Cross events, it was fine. Like we were just running, you know, distributor, you know, like the, the normal engines, you know, like a uh-huh. You didn't have electric ignition or anything out there, and like you know, doing Latin two or three minutes was fine, but like you know, everything was very, very, you know. Club man spec, very much basic, so. Yeah, uh, yeah. So like, I think we got half through the second stage, and the car had stopped. The uh, coil packed up or something. And right. Not a good, not a good memory, and it was non finished to start with. You know, in the uh-huh. first proper event, but and I don't, like we weren't no second hand tires, second hand everything. You know, the car was probably even on. I don't know what suspensions in there could have been four different Philistines <laughs> in it. God knows. Just whatever you're going to That was yeah. That was O five. That was modern fires O five. So I don't know whatever was seventeen or maybe uh-huh. just turned eighteen. But that was the plan. Me and Andrew were gonna. Just that was the job. Just mm-hmm. committing as many events as we could afford to do. So that was where it started. You know. Mm-hmm. I like as you said there, Andrew played such a vital part in your career, the progression and all. Like uh, probably w- you wouldn't have got to the level you got without Andrew, really. No, definitely not. Mm-hmm. Um, as I say, like Andrew used to like after secondary school, Andrew lived a couple of miles over in the, over in the Habog, over, over not that far from where like Arthur Cairns is from in these days and. My father used to come past there on the way back from work. So every evening, like around half six, Andrew would get collected. Uh, we try and get our homework done. Not that Andrew did any homework from school, but <laughs> try and get our homework done or whatever. Then my father would collect them on the way home after dinner. And then uh-huh. we'd spend, we'd stay from seven o'clock to probably 10 o'clock every night. We'd work on the car after uh-huh. school for whatever length of time it took. And then my father would run him back home. Like, you know, that's supposed to show you how dedicated my father was to the thing uh-huh. as well. Like, you know, yes. running the roads with us. Uh-huh. Um, and then as... I suppose I we finished we didn't leave and search and all that stuff and Andrew went to work and I ended up going to college then in Sligo and 
I suppose around that time we were doing, we started doing like, this is maybe 06, 07, we started doing like junior rallies and we graduated then up to doing, we done like the border championship and mm-hmm. give the national championship a lash in class 10. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, when I was in college there in Sligo, like it was impossible for me nearly to, I did, I did go up and down the road quite a bit, like I had a, a, mm-hmm. a car on the road and stuff, you know, but only for Andrew doing all the organisation and dad and Andrew doing a lot of the work on the car and, you know, mm-hmm. He always looked after the paperwork side and entries. Like only for that, whenever he would have got off the ground, like, it wouldn't yeah. happen. So mm-hmm. if Andrew wasn't on the scene uh, and the like or, or anyone like him, um, we certainly wouldn't be talking to you there. No, that's for sure. The wheels wouldn't have kept turned. So like then, yeah. as you said, like, like oh seven oh eight, like things were we're starting to you know progress. You know you're starting to pick up class awards. You know maybe podiums a couple. You know I think you actually won a class or you know along the way and all. Yeah. So like, uh, yeah, I think so. Like I suppose. All, all, always, like even when they're doing the, there was the junior autocross championship. It, it sort of became apparent that uh, you know I had something anyways. You know mm-hmm. I was able to drive a car, a car reasonably fast and reasonably consistently and mm-hmm. uh, string together like maybe a junior autocross championship up in Latin and maybe getting the odd overall win up in Kinnelec and the loose surface and stuff. And you know when a car, they probably shouldn't have been doing it. You know racing against guys with bigger cars and mm-hmm. you know so. We sort of had an inkling like there might have been something there, but you know, my father was willing to back us you know, to a certain degree and a couple yeah. of local guys were sponsors. But but yeah, like we done a few junior it took us a while to get the car sorted to be up the rally spec, you know, we had to put electronic uh, you know, ignition on it, get proper dampers and springs and mm-hmm. but I must say actually with a bad accident in 06 and Sligo Junior Rally, first stage, um, which is sort of the reason why I stopped we started writing our own notes. This is the other thing. This is how seriously we took it. Me, Seth mm-hmm. and Andrew took it. Like we started writing our own notes, like in 06. Like, right. We'd only done a handful of rallies. But I just had this. I'll tell you what it was actually. It was because I navigated. I I navigated with Garrett McCullough and actually Jim McKenna. Right. Done like five or six events um, before I started driving proper stages rally events. Mm-hmm. Um, like like, like Simona and Calvin and Castle, uh, the Castle Rally and mm-hmm. Northeast stages and all these kind of rallies. Air Lingus. Local enough events to us. And um so I learned what I learned how about notes. That's how I learned about notes, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the time, it was only ever Patterson's notes, you know, which yeah. is fine. It was great. But yeah. so Garrett used to use descriptive, and Jimmy kind of used numbers. And I started calling descriptive, and I know my father used descriptive, and a lot of the older guys used descriptive notes, and that's what I always used. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, it just sat, it just sat with me well. Yeah, Whenever I called the numbers, it never, never, could never figured out. But um, but anyways, the point I'm trying to make is with a bad accident, I had this. Everything was flat. The car had no power. <laughs> car had no power. Uh, we were 18, stone mad. You uh-huh. know, couldn't go fast enough. And yes. anyways, I had this, like, would, would it be like a three right to a lot of people or a fast, medium right through a crossroads with a kick jump on it. Uh-huh. And, like, we were only four speed, so you're coming up to it flat and forth. But you're, of course, doing the recce. I said, there's a line on that there. We can take that flat. So Andrew put it down as flat. The next thing... <laughs> we came up to an us, never lifted car left the road hit I don't know what it hit hit a wall on the left hand side people were saying she's not looking up the road I don't know like we're flapping fourth gear so you can imagine we're probably doing about 85 minutes it wasn't that fast like, but no, it, was, was not fast. it was much too fast but uh, people that were there and they said that the back panel of the car was touched t- touch the telephone wires that's how far up in the air we were and she'd done like a cartwheel in the air and yes I don't know what we should finish up with. The shell was wrecked. That was the one that we had spent our whole, I, that's you know, whole our, teenage, nights, uh, our, t- our teenage innocence <laughs> uh, building this car, and the car was in bits it was like a banana. Um, <laughs> so that was always sick. So we got away, thankfully, with it. You know, with, like, it was a massive accident. Like the car uh-huh. was completely wrecked, like a, an airplane crash. But <laughs> but ever since that, then I said, look, I'm going to have to put more effort into my notes here. So we said we'd uh, we start writing our own notes and we started practicing all this stuff. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, so. I suppose the start of 07, then we started, we got the new, the new, we got a shell, dad got some ropey oil shell somewhere and put it together. And mm-hmm. um, that was that 88 one three AD. Went down to my own, a wing and a prayer job, uh, and somehow or another won the class down there. Um, and we had registered for the border, and then we went to Monon, won the class in Monon. And then I think Calvin Rally, I don't know what happened, but I know we were racing. There was a couple of class 10 guys who were, you know, we had Martin Tyne and Kieran Tyne and the wee black horse. You had Adrian Fox, you had mm-hmm. Adrian Foley, a couple of local guys who'd done the border champs. These boys went hard. Like, yeah. you know, to beat, to beat these boys in class 10, you, you had to be on, on it. Like, yeah. And it was great competition. And you'll know that that's probably the whole secret to Irish motorsport why people can go anywhere and be fast because no matter what class you're in, 
you have to, to be competitive, you have to be on your game, you have to have mm-hmm. the right equipment, and you need to have your work done in your notes. Like you can't just turn up and expect the result to happen. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter if you're at the top end of the sport or you're in class, you know, like class, over, or class or whatever, you're class whatever. nine. Them boys are on the door handles, like you know, to mm-hmm. win cla- in the class, and it's every bit as much as ever <clears> probably goes in this as people mm-hmm. who are winning the rally. Mm-hmm. But anyways, yeah. So yeah, I suppose we started. I remember at the time, I think we had four class wins in a row or something, and we're down in Galway. And at the same time, the car was still pure, like ropey enough, you know. But mm-hmm. at this stage, we were sort of convinced that there was probably something more chasing here, like you know, sort of way. I'm taking it a bit more seriously, and yeah. we ended up then. Uh, we started in midway through 07, We we got a proper shell. We got a it was actually an ex prep fab shell. It was a brand new shell uh-huh. out of England. Um, bought it off Raymond Donnelly uh, up in Oma mm-hmm. and it was already painted that's the reason why the cars and we started out yellow my father this thing about the Jordan oh, yeah, yeah. you know the canary mm-hmm. yellow Jordan mm-hmm. yellow so yes. we started out yellow and it's canary yellow it was it was a wild looking colour but <laughs> it was yellow anyways that's <laughs> there was tint there didn't much <laughs> and my father was painting the car <laughs> in the shed yeah. you didn't know much choice no matter he mixed, the, he mixed the paint up but anyways <laughs> so the car was bought painted blues that's why we ended up uh, being blue uh-huh. yeah but uh, yeah, so we finished out the season. I can't remember. We, we start, decided to do, do the national, but we're having some good runs. But I remember we ended up, we went to Clare, um, the furthest ever we went down. And Adrian Foley was also, he had consistently sort of got top three. So like we did a win the class or been it, you know, that was sort of a, uh, like we put the car off the road in Cavan. And mm-hmm. Same thing. I distinctly remember it was that we were doing the Clare stage rally in 07. Um, class 10 we're leading the class we're having a mighty run like I remember Anthony Halloran was out in the Manta and some of these boys I think we were sitting like top five two wheel drive times with uh-huh. piss and rain like, so like power advantage was nothing uh-huh. but sure we were just so mad like you know yeah. and then like on the second last stage for no reason at all winning the class by probably a mile ended up like, complete, far too fast caught out in a bit of gravel landed the car upside down into like a nearly it was more or less a river like right. uh, upside down in there I had to get lifted out with a crane and Disaster, like oh. through the whole championship away, just been so mad. Like, but mm-hmm. you know, I was more concerned at that stage about being fast than it was about championship. Or anything else. But, um, I but I, the, 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 the top five like, your head. <laughs> yeah, it was like, a, mm-hmm. but that was the same day Colin McRae was killed, actually, right. And there was the stage, I don't know if there's mm-hmm. anything to do it or not, but uh-huh. it was the word started coming through that he had just been killed in the helicopter accident. Uh-huh. And then the ne- next thing I know, we're upside down in the fucking drain. Like, so yes. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but he was my hero, like, you know, uh-huh. so probably did subconsciously have some effect uh-huh. on me. But uh-huh. anyways, that's just, it never, it never leaves me mind. We're sitting at the start line at that stage and the word started coming through that McCray had been killed. Uh-huh. And next thing I know, we're upside down in the fucking train. <laughs> you <laughs> we couldn't get out of the car. The doors were jammed. Eh? Oh, jeez. And then the smell of petrol starts coming in. Oh. And the thing about it was, like, we were jammed in the car. You could hear the cars come past, but nobody knew we were there. Oh, Eventually, I don't know why. Andrew got out somehow. He had to clamber between the seats. I think he made a kick the back window to the car. And then you're standing in the water. Right. Well, we eventually got out of the car then, but oh, I was a holy handling to get her out. Mm. Uh, we had to get a teleporter and lift her out. And, mm-hmm. But anyways, we finished out the championship. Adrian Foley was from Bally Hayes. Uh, mm-hmm. He more or less had the championship wrapped up. There was the option of going down to, it must have been the, uh, the Fastnet Rally. Mm-hmm. So if we had to go into the Fastnet Rally, we would have to beat, I think we were going to have to win the class and Adrian was going to have to finish fourth. Okay. So I remember him calling him over the house and he asked us, like, dentists were open or whatever. And sure, like, we we were trying to fix the car, you know, and mm-hmm. he was saying, he's going, like, I'm not trying to be smart, he said, I can't afford to go to Cork, yeah. he says, and looks like you shan't, and then we just made a gentleman's agreement for, <laughs> that we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't, he wouldn't go, uh-huh. yeah, and he, he ended up winning the national class, and I don't know, we got second or something in the class that year or whatever, but uh-huh. we, at the same time, we had the, the blue yoke coming up the mm-hmm. pipeline, so I don't know, we've done a few more rallies that year, and then the blue yoke came on, the Pinto, we started mm-hmm. the Pinto then, yeah. sequential, and Big breaks, all proper stuff. Then you know, mm-hmm. and like you know, the one event that stands out that you know in the, uh, that year was Donegal. Like I think was it yeah, so nine. Ah, like Jesus, <laughs> unbelievable! You know, your first time competing in Donegal and certain times all through the weekend. I think fifth overall, you just were to finish up. You know, this yeah. was the, this was the 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 height the, the height of the, the class fourteen class thirteen yeah, guys. Yeah, that, that, it was always a dream to do Donegal. Goal. Like myself and Andrew would have spent many uh, night watching the, you know, the the twenty five year celebration video. Like from, yeah. done from, mm-hmm. was it 1972 to 19, 19, uh, whatever, six, seven. I remember watching. We would have watched that a hundred times. I would say. Mm-hmm. So like, Donegal already was steep. Like uh, you know, when you we, and it's, we've upset it and everything else, but. 
and he was got the opportunity to do done a few other rallies that year at good runs as well, but Donegal mm-hmm. then um yeah, not without with without his dramas, like I think we had to change the clutch in the first service up in Karen Dunner or somewhere and silly things like that there. But yeah, kept a fairly good steady pace the whole weekend and never put a mark on the car. I remember I think Wesley Patterson won that year. Um Brian Brogan, these guys, Damien Gallagher, like top three or something like that. But I remember someone commenting that the five cars in the top top five cars, we were fifth in the national. There wasn't wasn't a mark on any of the five cars and the right. pace were up the whole weekend. I just uh-huh. remember that for some reason. Yes. But yeah. But then the next rally, next the next rally after it was Slego. This is our, our second biggest, second big accident. Well, this is probably the biggest accident I've ever had. Um what we started to realize was I was able to drive the car beyond the car's limits. Okay. This is the problem. Right. Um so we went to Slego and then Anyways, it was going into the last loop of stages where we were laying third overall behind Adrian McIlvany and then SCA Subaru and um, what do you call him? John Price in the Metro. Like, so right. no business being there at all. Like, uh-huh. you know, total madness. And then what happened was there was rain. It was it was dry sort of all day and then there came rain and we decided that we'd take two spares because it looked like it was going to piss rain. So with two spare wheels in the back. But anyways, there was this real bumpy section. It was, it shouldn't have been flat at all, but I was taking it flat, like, uh, in the Pinto. And, uh, so the, and like you know, hear this, you hear this uh, phrase. You know, the car was only touching the road in places, but it literally uh-huh. was like it was stone mad. Like <laughs> no sense to it. But, yeah, you're just literally like it was swinging. Her, like there was pure luck, probably more than anything. But when well, anyways, what I didn't realize by putting an extra twenty five kilos in the back of the car would upset the. So mm. I hit this. Came I came out of flat as usual and never lifted me toe. Next thing, big jump and the push of the back of the car just flew into the air. She landed on her nose. We reckon we hit it. So the car went into the hedge and left hand side, but there was a tree stump. And the tree stump basically came in at the front left chassis leg, right through the car. We must have hit it about 90 miles an hour. And Andrew was bracing himself on the footrest. And basically, the foot, uh, the stump came through the footrest. And Andrew instantly broke his ankle. Not that he knew at the time. No. Mm-hmm. This is on the second last age, like, and we were sitting third overall, mm-hmm. so madly. Like. And then the adrenaline and everything else, sure, the car was wrecked. And there was only a couple of hundred meters down to the junction, but I think the car, the stage was sort of partially blocked, but the car pulled in off the road and we mm-hmm. ran down, ran down to the junction end because it was a it was really fast intersection. The car uh-huh. was wrecked, so we're there, sort of licking our wounds. But we had all a couple of people ran up to us to see where we were going, and we all ran down to the junction about two hundred meters. So you can imagine, like Andrew got out of the car, uh-huh. ran two hundred meters down to the junction, and then <laughs> when the adrenaline wore off and we we're licking our wounds, mm-hmm. Andrew says, "My ankle's not right." You know, the next thing we realize, he ended up going having to go to the hospital. He had, he, to this day, he has five. Five self tappers on his ankle and his heel, <laughs> <laughs> holding it together. And the car was wrecked. The uh-huh. car was totally right off. Yes. Uh, so, back, you know, within the space of, uh, you know, in the space of 12 months, we were reshelling again. Like, yeah. So, it was just uh-huh. ridiculous. Like, and then th- that's when the cost started to get spiraling. But, uh-huh. but ultimately, what we realized was that the car was great and the Pinto class looked like we could, you know, ma- you know we were well ahead of them boys were beating class 13 matching class 14 cars a lot uh-huh. and beating them a lot of times so uh, we realised we needed to start upgrading the car to try and match what, what I was trying to do okay. so uh-huh. that's what we started doing then 2010 then we got the well sorry towards the end of 09 okay. we got must have got the car reshell very quick yeah we did uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so it was Celtic Tiger I don't know but anyways <laughs> another shell and um, yeah we were in Partner, partner up with Desmond Ward at the time. Uh-huh. We getting a lot of parts of him and stuff, and Dad would have known him quite well. <clears throat> and uh, he had these Honda engine project. He had that silver escort, if you remember the two point four. Oh yeah, yeah, yes. Uh-huh. And he was trying to get a two liter engine off the ground. So he approached us to see would we try and maybe try this two liter engine. So we did. But uh, so this is the modern mini stages rally. Remember mm-hmm. Desi Keenan ran it. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. There's two stages, and so. Plan was to go to it, so we ended, we're seated number three. Everyone's going grand. I think we've done some testing with this new engine. Everyone's going great, but then, then like at scrutiny, and something happened. Uh, I can't remember what it was now. So, like electronics, anyways. Uh, I think the alternator or something got frayed and okay. it blew, blew out. We had the digital dash in, blew out the whole digital dash. Car was this is like six o'clock on a Saturday evening mm-hmm. at the Hillgrove Hotel, parking the car and parked for me. But anyways. <laughs> my father knew that Gareth McCullough had a real good spec car that car Barry McKenna owns it now like um, Gareth had won you know, the northeast mini stages and a few rallies mm-hmm. in it but Gareth wasn't doing the rally at the time and the mm-hmm. car was sitting ready to rally so he just lifted the phone around Gareth will you hire us the car 
he hired it to us like you know, didn't get insurance or anything so, no. so I had to remember like uh, Damien Hagen bringing the mm. car down and I don't know how he got scrutiny I think it was Pat Tarrant or someone came and scrutinized the car it said Hillgrove at the right. 10 o'clock at night right. mm-hmm. got the got the numbers pulled off air you can put on it's just last minute so had yeah. to bring back yards was about 6 foot 5 had to bring the car back to Damien Hagen's yards and I slid the forward, seat forward as far as I could. So first time I drove the car was back in, parked it in Park Fairman, like just at road speed. Yes. And then we went to the mini stage, but we'd done a really good recce. All this drama happened after the recce and everything. But then, yeah. but remember then we were seated number three. I think Mac McKenna was first on the road and Adrian Heatherton was second on the road. <laughs> Adrian probably won't thank me for telling you this story. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we were just fired up. Like, you know, yeah. the car was more or less the same spec. It was in 13 inch wheels, five speed sequential, only that it had a two litre Vauxhall in it. Yes. So, and I had tested the other Honda thing, and there wasn't much difference in the two. The car was more or less identical to what we had. Uh-huh. But anyways, uh, started off in the first stage, and just everything just clicked, like, and we were in the zone. And, like, half through the stage, we'd caught and passed Hetherington, which he, he remembers it now. Like, he just, uh-huh. he, he, he calls us, the, he called us after that, he nicknamed us the baby-faced assassins. Because <laughs> <laughs> we caught and passed him, like, and he just couldn't fucking believe it, to be honest oh, with you. Yeah. Um, I think we were 22 seconds quicker than anybody on the stage. Or uh-huh. it was only four stages. It was only two stages done twice. twice. Uh-huh. Yeah, and Ed O'Callan was there, and Connor, I think Connor Harvey and Ed O'Callan finished second overall. But yeah. or maybe sorry, John O'Donnell. Maybe it was actually. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, we had the work done on the first stage. It was just a matter of keeping on the road. One, one that, uh-huh. and then we got we got the there was issues then with that two liter engine Honda engine, and then we mm-hmm. got the 2.4. This actually gave us the 2.4 engine to go into Wexford, but mm-hmm. we didn't finish. Something happened again. I think a coil or something packed up. Okay. And then we done the Castle Hellfire Rally. Mm-hmm. Finished second overall to Gary Jennings and Pissing Rain. He had that black Evo at the time. Got a oh, good run yeah. there. Uh-huh. And then Kieran Tynan, a good friend of himself and Andrews, he got married that year. And as a Christmas present, Andrew had given Kieran for giving me a seat. So we were seated number one in the Sligo mini stages and Kieran sat on for the first time. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's in car of it there somewhere, but you'll notice that the dash, we still even hadn't got the dash fixed. The dash was still born out in the car from <laughs> It was only a couple no, of weeks later, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so literally driving blind, and it was uh, I think we had a gear indicator on the dash, but like you know, it's just and it was we got around it and we won that as well. But then yeah, over the winter, then we built the car into the 15-inch car and the Millington mm-hmm. arrived. Yes. So mm-hmm. yeah, and then so was, uh, finally sort of had a car under me then that I wasn't fit to drive. <laughs> You know, I had to go back to learn how to drive it, sort of. Yeah, because everybody says the first time you get into like a Millington. It just takes your breath away. You know, you've heard all the stories. You, you know, you've. It's you not think. even the first time. If you get <laughs> every time you get into it, <laughs> it's one of those. You, you could you could you could drive one all day, and you still get into it and take it for up the road, and you right. still you'd still struggle Respected, to get your head around. Uh, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just unbelievable. Like. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so for some reason I don't even know why we decided to do Galway international. We started to do international rallies for for the cracks. So uh-huh. Done the Galway one, one Galway national first time out. Like proper two day event, it was a mm-hmm. but we don't do any call, I suppose. But, anyways, um, and then we're racing Barry Mead and good old run, anyways. And then, see, I was in the middle of doing college and stuff at this time as well, so I was finishing up my final year exams. Yes. So, I know uh, I miss Monaghan, no name because uh, dad and Andrew done Monaghan because I was doing my final year exams in Sligo, right? You couldn't get uh, for the honors degree in, in mechanical engineering, and then I done a post postgrad diploma. Mm-hmm. In energy management as well, and that's I was so there was a bit of a gap there. I was doing exams, but anyways, what happened then? Oh, yeah, I went to Monaghan. Sure, this is when we started like racing the likes of Gary McPhillips and Manus Kelly would have been out in the yellow car, mm-hmm. and you know, Wesley and Brian Brogue and these guys, you know, boys stalwarts of the class 14. Uh-huh. And uh, so, so we were coming in trying to whippersnappers trying to see could we match them and beat them and everything else. And, mm-hmm. So yeah, a lot of times it would go well, and sometimes it wouldn't go so well. I know we were going well in the morning, and again, I had this thing in my head, taking all these jumps flat out. I didn't realise, I probably didn't have enough mechanical sympathy, you know, but, and he was landed over this jump and broke the suspension instantly, mm-hmm. and they uh, put us out of the rally when we were leading the class or whatever. I think we're, mm-hmm. I don't know, I think we'd actually sec- set a second fastest time or something behind Melvin mm-hmm. Evans and this 12B. <laughs> Silly, just mad stuff. Like. Yeah. And um I remember then the gearbox we had in did, wasn't fit for the power that the mm-hmm. main was pulling out. So we were starting to get, so we ended up being attractive then and went to Cavan, but mm-hmm. gearing was all wrong. Uh, just gear too low with the wrong drop yeah. gears in, basically. Right. So you could have went off the line, basically, in second gear. So it was basically okay. going, 
I was, I was probably only at the top end of about 100 mile an hour and you're diving basically four gears but we won the class there as well but we got mm-hmm. the car sorted then for Donegal got all the gear and everything sorted mm-hmm. so we had a real good run on Donegal that year that was you know big, big, a lot of effort went into that and then mm-hmm. um, we're leading in Ashton after the Friday it was when I was up in, remember the Bunkrana Town stage oh yeah 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 they done that they were going real well there two, two, yeah two passes and, and they were brilliant stages that, you know that Malin Head stage I think that's the best stage in the country like, now I must say I've never actually rallied in Cork or Kerry yet no I yeah. did rally in Cork sorry but I've never done Killarney that's the point uh-huh. I'm going to make and I know a lot of people say the best stages are in Killarney but that mm-hmm. Malin Head stage up in the goal I think is something else I've done that two or three years in a row mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's yet to be bettered for me anyways but anyways um so David Bogey was there in the Metro, I think, and the Sherry was sitting with him. But mm-hmm. um, we were going well on the Saturday. I don't know what stage it was. I think it could have been Fanned anyways. I cut a corner too much and clipped the front left wheel of a wee concrete culvert, you know, like in too tight. Mm-hmm. And uh, struggled onto the stage, dropped a load of time. But And the Bogey was ahead of us then by, I don't know, whatever the time was. It wasn't much in it anyways. We yeah. had dropped 20 odd seconds and he was ahead of us then. And then you had that loop. Was it Knockall and Fanned? Knockall and Fanned uh, mm-hmm. in the afternoon. Yeah. But anyways, I don't know if you remember now, uh, the rally anyways got cut short at the time. That's there was right, yeah, up in the valley. Mm-hmm. And um, anyways, I think we took one second. I think Bogey was ahead of us by two seconds and Bogey had, we took one second out of him in the Kala and then the rally was cancelled. Uh-huh. And so he won. So we got second national. But, uh-huh. but uh, yeah. So what transpired then was, uh, I suppose what, what we noticed was Keith Cronin had just won the British Championship um, you know, beating Gwyneth Evans, Mark Higgins, these guys. Mm-hmm. Then he was out in the JRM um, Evo 10 mm-hmm. that Gwyneth Evans. So he was doing the, he was the Prelly Star driver. He won the he won the Prelly Star driver after winning the championship. So we probably were paying him to do the BRC. Mm-hmm. But then JRM, who was actually running Gwyneth Evans, paid him to do some selected events. So Donegal was one, was one of them. Of them. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I remember on the Friday, like we were matching and beating Keith Cronin, the British champion, in a you know, the latest spec Evo 10 group yeah. in car. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously the escort was probably suited better to the stage or whatever else, but anyway, was, so like we got it in our head, like, you know, maybe we should look at this, you know. Uh-huh. So that's how it sort of came about, that we end up going to the Ulster and a Derek Job, Evo 9, to mm-hmm. see. Just for you to you know, And it's not as if we were just going to see, where, like we registered for the championship so that we okay. could be eligible for the Pirelli Star driver. Like, it's not as if, like, uh. whenever, anything we ever done, like we never had much, like we had enough to, like, I, I was always privileged in the position to go like, rallying for start and then rallying mm-hmm. at, at, at a fairly good level. And But like we never done a whole load of events. Like what we do is we'd select events, put a lot of effort into it, make sure the car was right. Uh, you know, with Bobby Sharkey and the team at that stage, and Bobby Sharkey is an absolute genius. Um, mm-hmm. People will know what Bobby's like. And he started to school me then on, you know, how to set up a car, which never really entered my mind, you know, up until mm-hmm. probably 2009. Uh-huh. Um, you only thought the car was handling until, you know, Bobby basically started doing his know, tweaks on it. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and everything else. But anyways, yeah, so we finally had the car under us properly. But, but yeah, what I'm saying, the point I'm trying to make uh-huh. is, we had strategically planned that this was a possibility and, and yes. that's why we ended up going to Ulster. Oh, that was the thought process behind it. That you're yeah, like and everything, yourself, everything, uh-huh. yeah, everything we've ever done, like I'd be very pragmatic as always being an engineer and, you know, I would weigh up the risk and weigh up everything else and the decision was made, we'd rent the car, see what would happen. Like, and, mm-hmm. But we'd done everything right. You know, went and registered for the championship and pretty sure driver was the goal and, you know, I suppose I was very much like that. I have set a goal for myself and I'd, be disappointed if I didn't meet it. Okay. Um, but and he was ended up having a good run. Mm-hmm. Can't remember the full ins and outs of it, but like Derek's car was perfect. You know, it was a great car, but it was and essentially it was a clubman spec car. Yeah, you know it what wasn't I mean? the Versus, same level as I. Yeah, yeah like you know, was basically a, a exactly. Yeah. Sense, yeah, but it was still a good car. It was a damn good car. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't know, we were setting good times and everything else, and I don't know where we were laying, maybe fourth overall or something after the first day, and at the next stage then. Uh, the first day Saturday morning got caught in a chicane. Them big old cars are very awkward to chicanes, but mm-hmm. I stalled it. What I didn't realize was they're very, very hard to start with the anti lag on. I didn't know that. And mm-hmm. it took us about a minute to figure it out to turn off the anti lag. Mm-hmm. And, and it was got it fired up, but and it was it sort of threw away a good result. But in my head, I said that it doesn't matter, but it's all about the performance. So then we started knocking in like crazy times, like you know, we're setting maybe now at this stage, I must say, you know, whoever crown on them, these guys they had backed off, the rally was over, it was just a matter of them maintaining whatever they had. And mm-hmm. like he won it and Gwyneth was second, and Alistair Fisher was there, and these guys, Elf and Evans, and them guys were there. And uh, we're there, we're starting to like sort of 
turn things down. We were turning the wake up, you know. <laughs> uh, so like we're setting like fastest, second fastest times. But unfortunately, then of course I got a bit too over exhumed over a big jump uh, into coming down to square left. T- said to take this jump flat. I don't know what height she was in the ground, but uh-huh. off the ground. But um, couldn't get her stopped for like a square left and off the road into a ditch. And I said, oh, "Jesus, well that's the end of that." And thought I threw the whole thing away. I eventually, anyways, that was us out. Walked down to a junction in and um, T Tech. What do you call T Tech? Uh, that runs Cronin's cars. Oh, uh, T-E-G, column, uh, T-E-G, T Tech. Uh, column. Uh, um, yes. geez, I can't think of his surname. Oh, yeah. And he was he was in with Pirelli, obviously at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and next thing he started saying to me, he says, "You need to come with me back into where was the rally? Run? I was running at Antrim. Uh, Antrim. Antrum. Uh, Antrum, yeah. Says you need Antrum. to come back with me into Antrim. I go, what are you on about? And I, I said, the, f- the car's laying on the edge. Yeah, I said, what's saying? You know, no, he says, you need to come to me now right away. And then, obviously, then we started to figure out what must be something going on here. And Andrew says, you may go. He says, I look after the show. So Andrew ended up staying to look at the car pull out of the hedge and um, call him, Jesus, the name escapes I know, me now. You can't I know, remember right. him. And the but young boy is rallying now, isn't he, too? Um, the uh, T-Tower. Colm's yeah. really good, yeah. He's really yeah. genius. Yeah. Really. He's, <laughs> yeah, another good setup man with cars and everything else and mapping. But anyways... He brought us in, and sure enough, just as we landed, they had the yellow jacket out, and we'd just been announced, like, and, oh, sure, look at it. Uh-huh. We, we'd achieved our goal despite throwing the car off the road. I suppose we'd shown them enough, uh-huh. you know, but obviously we're very raw, you know, so mm-hmm. so the Prelly Star driver shoot out then is obviously going to be over in Sweet Lamb, left-hand drive, done my research. This mm-hmm. is the right-hand drive we've in. Okay. So then a couple of the guys responsible me and stuff said, geez, well, you better give yourself the best chance. There's one more round the championship over in the track rod and started doing the research. And we ended up renting a, a left-hand drive, even one of Barry Clark, went over okay. to the track run. Mm-hmm. Um, f- with very limited experience. Never done a recce on gravel running else, but Barry had a recce car and everything else. But went over anyways, the, the, sort of, the main goal was to try and get a bit of seat time and left-hand drive, mm-hmm. learn the sort of, you know, try and obviously show we could do something as well. And then, uh, you know, try and, uh, I suppose, just see what the standard was like, you know what I mean? And then go to the shootout and see what happened. But anyways... Mm-hmm. You ended up having a good run. I think we were finished fourth overall mm-hmm. in the track rod. And yeah. Set a couple of good times again. Mm-hmm. Getting used to the left hand drive was really tricky, to be honest with you. I don't yes. think it was that I really, really struggled with left hand drive. Um, but virtually no. Because you had no left hand road car at that stage. No, Derek Job record. actually had a, Derek Job actually had a left hand drive road car, and he gave it to me after the Ulster when we had decided right. to do that. That's how very that's a good Derek was to us, you know. Yes. And he gave me a left hand drive Passat for whatever the month was leading up to yeah. it, and that was a good help. Um, and I think Joe McGonagall. Do we end up actually doing the recce now in Joe McGonagall's left hand right here? You know, typical Irish motorsport guys. Aye, everybody pulls really together, yeah. don't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyways, um, no, Joe gave me his car, sorry, for the pretty shootout. That's what it was. Oh, yeah. But anyways, um, yeah, done the track road and good enough result as well. And uh, we proved it with a bit of pace and tarmac and gravel. But you're like, then you go to the shootout then in Sweet Lamb, whenever it was, and you have, you know, Craig Breen, Alfin Evans, um, I think Yarko Nakaro was there, who was really quick. Finnish driver, there's not be another foreign guy, Norwegian guy, mm-hmm. um, Robert Barable, Ali Fisher. Um, you know, just, we had no business being there to be honest with you, you know. But you had um, at the same these, time, you know, ah, I know, but these guys are doing the whole championship for season yeah. campaigners and had their goals in mind and everything else. Mm-hmm. But, but I remember they, they had the Suzuki, what was it? The we, no, oh, the uh, Swift, isn't it? From, it's just, uh, was it Bobby. Swift? Was it or right, from the driving thing? I know. Uh, there's Could have been. I can't, I can't remember what it was. They might have had two cars or three cars for us to drive, but but there's the whole thing like um, there's they didn't do a fitness test then for some reason. Thankfully, because I was far from fit. <laughs> <laughs> As everyone probably knows who knows me, I've, I've always carried a bit of timber. Like, but anyways, <laughs> didn't really ever seem to bother me when it came to driving. But anyways, you had to take yourself seriously, and they could see you right away. The image wasn't right. It wasn't. You know, yeah. so that was a, that was the mark down straight away. They didn't actually do a fitness test from I can't remember why it was now. Um, something happened, I can't remember what it was. Right. The fitness instructor didn't turn up or something silly, I yeah. don't know what it was. But anyways, you went and done a pace note training with I think it was Nikki Griss and Chris Patterson. They went and they sat into the car, in the back of the car with you while you made your notes. Like um what else happened? Is, then, is that intimidating? Just you know, just... yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's very intimidating. You know, yeah. you have uh, 
two two World Rally co drivers sitting in <laughs> like some of these guys, some of these cars in the own seats, like so they're sitting hanging on to road gauge for a start. It's just <laughs> far from comfortable. Yes. You're driving around at 15 and 20 mile an hour, so it's not dangerous or anything. No, but it's definitely good. You know, you just know these guys are critiquing you, like, and it's not just totally unnatural. Like mm-hmm. um, and then yeah, you've got a couple of warm-up laps and you're running the front wheel drive car and then there's a different stage set up. It was over two days, and then you went had run the four wheel drive car and stuff. And mm-hmm. I remember ringing Keith Cronin, and he says like, "What you need to do is have to be the least fussy as uh, no, don't be fussy at all." Like, like he says, I got into the Subaru that time. He says, and like he's tall, and he says, my knees were up around my ears, but I didn't want to say that I needed the seat move because I thought, oh, this guy's a fussy fella, you know. I, uh, he just got and drove. He just got and drove it in like, fast time, anyways, you know, which is even better. Like so, I, that's why I said like I just would be grand, whatever it was. Whereas I know some of the other guys are like, like they wanted the suit move two mil and this kind of stuff and putting mm-hmm. the steer wheel bosses in and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, yeah, look, you know, this might stand to that side of it, you know. But anyways, mm-hmm. look, and I don't know, we weren't we weren't anywhere near the top times or anything else, but I like to think we'd give a good account of ourselves in this in the scenario. But mm-hmm. Elf and Evans anyways won it. Um, and you know what he's going on to do. Yes. Um so um, I was, it was a major achievement for me, but mm-hmm. what the realization was that the money that had to be spent between doing them two rallies and going over to that and yes. with the escort and everything else that we had in the middle, it was just holding was just getting out of hand. Like, and you know, without proper support, like mm-hmm. back from Pirelli, it was just we said we'd give it a lash and we did, and mm-hmm. we can't say we didn't try. No. And that's sort of where we sort of finished up in 2010. We're sort of thinking, well, we'll just go out in the escort now whenever we can, whenever we have the money, and we'll have a bit of crack, and that'll be it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think at this stage I had been through the Billy Coleman Award once and this is maybe I think I got nominated for the second year mm-hmm. but again I can't remember who was winning it at the time but they weren't really taken seriously uh, the modified, uh, men, uh, modified yeah. men to be honest with you um, I think that's well documented I don't mm-hmm. know until maybe Sean McHugh got maybe more heavily involved with it you know mm-hmm. where he could maybe it didn't matter what you drove if you had you know talent and you had the right um, attitude mm-hmm. you could uh, you could do it but anyways so then we moved on to 2011. Mm-hmm. I got no only done selected. I had actually moved over to England this stage myself and Ashley, the girlfriend at the time, mm-hmm. went over to England. And then I think we only done three or four events, but really good runs. I think we've done the Midlands stage as well. We won it Sorry. overall. Uh-huh. Uh, done Monaghan, I think, I don't know, top five or something, won the class. Mm-hmm. And then went to Donegal, well prepared for Donegal. So obviously, after leading the national and everything else, we said we'd give Donegal a good last show. We're well fired up for Donegal in 2011. And mm-hmm. um, Fanad, I think, was the first stage backways to the way we would have known it, but mm-hmm. uh, sort of damp conditions didn't really suit like a, a rear wheel drive escort. Like, well, I don't know, for whatever reason, it just clicked, clicked and mm-hmm. yeah, just with a real, real good run. Like, didn't seem too wild. Like, Andrew will tell you, for some, we didn't carry a camera in for that rally, but for some reason, the camera didn't turn on at the start of the stage, unfortunately. Uh. But it was some run there at the same time. Like, mm-hmm. it was just one of those sort of. I'd say I've never done a perfect stage, that's what I always say, but that was close to it at times. But uh-huh. uh, I think we ended up second fastest behind the uh, um, like yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, crazy run. Like, you know, I were a good bit quicker than some of the other national guys. Mm-hmm. And no sense to it at all. Like, you know, the whole thing about Donny always trying to it for three days, and here you are, like, <laughs> playing 10, 10, 11 times. <laughs> yeah. And then the start of the second stage was Atlantic Drive then and uh-huh. for some reason there was a massive delay so everything went stone cold at the start okay. of the stage and you start off at the crossroads you go up the hill and there's mm-hmm. I don't know what it is now there's a right hand or a left hand anyways I, I would generally take a flat anyways but what the problem okay. was that everything was stone cold cool. and the car snapped on me there's a f- fast over the crest anyways and then there's a medium sort of right hander car snapped me and I was fighting with it then got around the left hander somehow and then she ended up hitting the bank, she was a 360 mid air and went back was into the bank and and somehow some one one fell movement and he was managed to get the car in the first year. Didn't lose that much time, but uh-huh. um but knew there was something wrong. The car was crabbing on the road. Okay. And he was got through the stage. I think we still set the fastest time. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how actually in class 14. I remember Andrews in service. We got through the next stage then, but we discovered then that there were bent the axle, you see, at the end of the stage. Mm-hmm. And then we were like, oh, Jesus, what are we going to do? Leading the national now, bent axle. To, you know, we're not even... Like Friday, right? <laughs> yeah. And we didn't have a spare axle. Like. So when it was landed into... Where would the service have been then? I can't um, even remember. Was it up Milford, there? That was Milford, yeah. Milford, 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 yeah. yeah. So landed in to Sharkey with this bent axle, like leading the national and two and a half days rallying still to go, like... <laughs> 
<laughs> like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> you know, because we don't have a spare <laughs> axle, and we don't. We're running a Volvo axle. So it's not even. It's not I as if you could borrow. Yeah. No, no one else really had an axle. There's only maybe two or three people had. There might be, maybe a few more than that. But nobody had right. an axle spare. Anyways, yeah. so the only option was uh, it was badly bent. Like basically, the whole stub was bent. Um, back, you know, towing away out. I think it was okay. the rear left hand side. So Sharky ended up took the hash after out and. He all he could do was just drop the grinder, drop, dra- drop the grinder down through it, uh-huh. straighten it up, sort of. Yeah, he got, got maybe got strings or something on it, uh-huh. welded it up, and put the hash out back. And he says, "I don't know how long it'll last." He says, <laughs> "But sure, that's all we can do, you know." And what we'll do, he says, every service we'll check the hash. I think we would end up putting new hash shafts in every service then or something. Okay. And he said, "What he told us to do was uh, at the end of so at the end of every stage, drive straight to the start of the next stage, jack the car up." Take the hash shaft out and make sure it was going. You know, just check it out. If it yeah. looks like it's going to break, just pull her in, like you know. Uh-huh. So that's what we done the whole weekend. For so people, were probably courses for not having the crack with them, but we were uh-huh. actually almost nursing the car. From uh-huh. so we used to drive straight to basically the control board on the next stage, uh-huh. and then uh-huh. drag the car up, take the wheel off, pull the hash out. And this is what we were at the whole weekend, nursing the car through. And yeah, but the hell together, like you know, I don't think there's anybody else in the country who could have done what Jackie done. He basically got the axle uh-huh. completely square with a nicking it with a grinder and welding it up again. Uh-huh. Unbelievable. Like, I remember there's guys there helping us. Bobby tell you a story. He knows the guy's name, but you know, middle of June, there's a guy with a string vest, like uh, <laughs> laying under the car, maybe with a bar, pulling the stub round. Yes. Don't even know who it was. It wasn't one of our guys, just probably some guy. Just some random dude. Yeah, uh, just to uh, help out. Uh, and Bobby was well in the way. And Bobby says, Sir, you're going to get burnt in there with him. Is you well in the way, so I'd be fine. <laughs> and the splash goes straight down your boy's white string vest, I'm melting on me. But sure. <laughs> It's just madness. Once again, you know, the rally community, just the way everybody yeah. just gets stuck in, isn't it? You know? So, mm-hmm. so anyway, it was, yeah. The one, dream won, won, won the, yeah. Won the national. Yeah, won yeah. the national. Like, it's, mm-hmm. I think it was, it was Andrew's 24th birthday as well. That shows you, was it his, yeah, I think it was his birthday. Uh-huh. I know, it's at 09. No, I know, maybe the first year when on Donny Gall, Andrew's birthday, it was 09, and we were in the Mount uh-huh. should a big prize given. I remember my woman bought it. He was 24th birthday. I think it was the Saturday after rally. So he never got yeah. celebrating. Yeah. My woman bought him a bottle of champagne like in the Mount Ergel, 70 euros or whatever it was. And they got about tw- 12 glasses for the people around us. Her Andrew got the bottle and she sprayed it everywhere. Just sprayed Mount Ergel. And next thing, you know, when Henry finished spraying, he went to turn the bottle over to the first glass and oh, there was a, bit, God. A, thim- a thimble of food. And it was just dripping down on top of us off the ceiling. Like... <laughs> My woman going stone mad, a 70 euro bottle of champagne sprayed around the place, like in the middle of my dark. Like, yes. the place is destroyed. Sure, I'm gonna be shite, but it's good crack. Like, yes. <laughs> it's a good crack. Yes. But anyway, was saying, um, What was I saying? I'm losing, yeah. I'm getting, I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we had a good night that night. Aye, Jim okay. McKenna says, Jim McKenna says, It's the only praise given you go into in daylight and you come out of it that daylight. <laughs> So, I don't know, six o'clock in the morning, Joe, or yeah. something coming out of the uh, well, afternoon and last. Yes, you'd well learned it at that stage. Hadn't mm, you, so. so, anyways, yeah. <laughs> but I, as I say, I, at the time I was going over and back to England as well. We were living over in London. Um, and, yeah, at the at the time then, we were like sort of, we were, we were setting, our, our dreams were sort of being realised. We were like, you know, what's... What, what's what, the point? What else you know, can we do here? You know, we're also really like business was strong. So my father had his own business, and business wasn't great. You know, not that it wasn't great, but it was it wasn't as good as what it was. Let's say yes. you know, after a recession, and everything else, and mm-hmm. it was hard to justify spending that kind of money. Like you know, going to Donegal and you're putting new tires on back of the car if you loop or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's big though, like you know, and it's not as not 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 easily not easy to find. No, follow, and there's like. no there's no big reward at the end of it. No, it really? so we didn't do any rallies then for the whole rest of 2011. But somehow, mm-hmm. I suppose because I had won a few rallies, uh, got nominated for the big Coleman event. But at this stage, I was getting used to it. You know, I knew yes. what was expected and <laughs> how to do the portfolio up. And you know, Desi Keenan won it, and a few Monon guys won it. You know, and they were giving me good tips and everything. Mm-hmm. So I gave it a good lash, anyways, and done it the portfolio. The only real sensible thing you could do was try and get the pretty star driver. But this is 2011 mm-hmm. for 2012. But anyways, didn't get it. Um, but that was fine. Like uh, mm. Sam offered one that year. But I was just like this grand, like you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, you were expecting. Them we don't, we don't have the money. Like the money they were getting from like home was great, but it's still not enough to fund the championship. I was fifty thousand or whatever. It wasn't. It yeah. wasn't going to be. Uh, fifty thousand is a lot of money as well, you know. But and rally not. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Not when you're going over back to England, like, but uh, yeah. over the, going back to the UK. But um, mm-hmm. so that was it. Yeah, into twenty twelve then and. Similar sort of thing, just sort of hand-picked events. I can't remember even what we done. Yeah, I think we done Midlands again. I think yeah. we won the Midlands rally again because we liked that event. Um, so we won it overall. And then we went to Monon. Yes. 
fame that's phone the, in one and then. Oh, it's the one yeah. that people's never going to forget, is it? You know, so. <laughs> yeah, like some people, it's strange. Like a uh, few people, I'm living up in Donegal here now, as you know, uh-huh. and moved back from England. But anyways, yeah, Jesus, like I meet these random people. Sometimes I know them, sometimes I don't. Like, and they still, when they really, maybe they don't know who I am, and then they might realize whatever. And next thing, <laughs> Jesus, I'll never forget the day you and know, Phillips are going down the road. Like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, I didn't think so many people cared, but anyways. Uh, that, yeah. like, you know, that is like, an iconic. You know, Irish rally and saying that the two years coming down, it's ball no rallies flat, yeah. You know, over then jumps coming down, in you know, so I know it's, it's a strange one, yeah. It's a really, really strange one, mm-hmm. but I just I suppose I can just I, I think I've already talked about it before, but anyways, we ended up we were going quite well, and I don't know, we were. I don't know, we were after the first loop stages, we had a good enough gap. We were 30 seconds ahead of Gary or something like that there. Mm-hmm. And then, I don't know what stage. That, that was, that was, I think it was the sixth stage. That was the third stage of the loop. That was that 18 miler. Desi Keenan was the COC. Yeah. And mm-hmm. like, geez, it was some rally though. He had set up that stage. Like, that stages, was some, yeah. mm-hmm. oh, stop the lights. It was brilliant. Like, you know, I remember Seamus Leonard saying, like, these, these stages are set up for my two boys. And he was 100% right. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, but anyways, like with the WRC is still well ahead of us, like we weren't racing them. But anyways, we had a good cushion after the first loop of stages. But anyways, there was a on that 18 mile stage, there was a, a downpour of rain that happened. This is the second time around. And um first, like let's say nine mile of stage was bone dry. And next thing uh-huh. we're up this big long straight over crest a hill just outside Smithborough, heading toward Ballon Road, and the road was drenched. Eh? And I don't know. I think Maguire and a few of them were ahead of us. They said, the guys had dropped out. We might have been running third or fourth year on the road or something uh-huh. at that time. And uh, we couldn't get stopped. And it was car locked up. And I couldn't, all I could do is just, I just had the nipper on the hammer, put a, put a backwards in the bank and hope for the best. But no way we were getting stopped. And thankfully, there's there nothing no, nothing else there. But we ended uh-huh. up hitting like a, I think it was like an electricity pole, like a, for like a, a meter box thing. Oh, yes, yeah. Uh-huh. Into the back of it. And sure, massive impact on ears. And I was like, oh, should that's the end of that. Like, you know, I just, there's no way. So anyways, I sat in the car. Andrew says, I'll go out and check. Sure, you know, I was saying, sure, the petrol tank, everything must be busted in shape. Uh-huh. So Andrew got in. What actually happened was that the spare wheel actually had saved the tank from getting busted because oh, yeah, it was, sort of, it, it was yeah. strapped in tight and it was strapped tight to the tank. So uh-huh. there was no gap for it to get any energy. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So the, 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 the tire only absorbed move, the energy. Yeah, uh-huh. But sure, the two quarter panels were in rillions and the exhaust was dragging on the floor. And Andrew had a quick look around. Nothing was leaking, nothing, everything. And he hopped back in. And uh, this is in the space of like 25 seconds. No, mm-hmm. but me and Andrew always of this ruler um, would never, if we ever stopped on the stage, would never move, you know, until, I suppose, I'll tell you where it actually came from, was actually doing the, that was another thing you had to do at the Prelly Star Driver, you had to do a wheelchair challenge. Okay. So it was belts, it was your time from belts off to belts on. Mm-hmm. So we had practiced this, so we had gotten quite good at it, you know, doing the spare wheel change. Mm-hmm. So we always said that if we ever get out of the car on the stage, we'd never would never move until we were strapped back in. So by the time Andrew got in, clipped on, next thing, my Phillips was coming sliding towards us. Uh-huh. He couldn't, he oh, just yeah, about he got stopped. He was nearly straight in front of us. And like the yellow flag, Marshall's like, we're trying the best, but at the stage, you had already committed to the, you had already committed to the crest before it. And uh-huh. a yellow flag at that point was never, well, it needed to be the other side of the crest, but it was yeah. too far up the road. And it was, just as he got clipped in, Gary came around the corner and away we oh. went. <laughs> but Andrew, I don't know why Andrew, he didn't ever say it, but, um, for some reason, we had the in-car camera. We have that in-car of us going off. But for whatever reason, just as we are going off, he just says, he said to himself, this is something that probably shouldn't be recorded. Whatever's going to happen now right. in the next eight or nine mile, and he turned the camera off. I don't know uh, how he thinks yeah. these things, but that's just the way his brain works. Uh-huh. It probably would be great to see it, but I was... Uh, I'll never forget it anyways, but yes. like you're <laughs> sitting in that man's bumper uh-huh. for eight mile. Like, and their car wasn't handing right, and he was on the door handles. And obviously... We knew it was at stake. It was winning the cl- class winning mm-hmm. one rally, maybe a top mm-hmm. three overall finish. So he was on the door handles. We were on the door handles, but the back of our car was wasn't right. The watch linkage yeah. bars were bent. So every time we over bumped, she was all over the shop. Mm-hmm. So it was hairy and enough. He, like, had but, the, he had the pressure of you sitting on his bike bumper too. That yeah, that's it. Yeah, too, I'm yeah. pretty sure he knew we were there, but um, mm-hmm. So look, there's there were places where his car was fast, there's places where like they're both Millington engines. He was in 13 inch wheels and 15 inch. So yeah. his car was actually a bit quicker in acceleration, but our car was much faster in the braking. Mm-hmm. And then I had a five speed, so in the mid-range corners and then the fast corners, we were able to catch up with him. So like he'd get away out of sort of a junction, funny enough. Uh-huh. And then we catch up again. And it was, it was funny, like you know, even while all this was just complete chaos, you could well actually listen, study. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, the idea was if we store stayed in the bumper, um so we, at that stage, we were 26 seconds ahead of him. So mm-hmm. I think Andrew was talking to me all this. He was, if we stay with him, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll only be yeah. four or five seconds off him. At this mm-hmm. stage, we didn't even know how bad the car was repairable or not. 
So when he was into service, car was in bits. So Bobby started working at the axle end and he was cutting all the bars straightened up and everything else. But anyways, for some reason, we had to, oh, we had to move the dry sump tank to try and b- batter out the quarter panel uh-huh. and try and get the exhaust straightened up. So I think it was Finton Andrews' uncle who services for us. He loosened out the dry sump tank and as he lifted it up, all the oil started pushing out of it. The A piece of the floor had actually Punctured the dry sometime, uh-huh. but whatever way it actually on it's the seal of the tank, it. yeah. So, like, with 10 minutes to go, next thing we had no dry, I had to run and go running around. So, I think uh, Seamus McHugh I had to go with Seamus McHugh and got a brand new dry sump tank of him and run me running around the service area with 10 minutes. So, I had to pipe a new dry sump tank into the car, and Bobby was still sitting up the axle. And at this stage, we didn't know that Maguire was having bothered with the gearbox, so he uh-huh. was still leading the rally and he was yes. well ahead of us. Like, but uh-huh. his he was going out with the hope to try and keep in the rally, but. He was going to try and, and was, um, yeah, yeah trying to nurse it through because he probably had enough time, you know, ahead of me and Gary. But at the time, yeah, we were he was second, we were third at, the ta- at yeah. that time. But anyways, the, the race I think we ended up putting in wasn't the right one because you you needed an extra breather and a swirl pot, a swirl pot on the top of the tank, isn't right. it? For the Millingtons, you know. But anyways, she was basically blowing oil straight out onto the road, but it didn't mm-hmm. matter. It was we just kept popping it up. But anyways, and then the rain had come in at this stage. But anyways, um, so we had went. So I think we had went quite conservative with the tire choice. In the in the panic, we still had the clarity to have a to have a sort of a discussion about tires. So what we decided to do was we went like on intermediates and we took two slicks with us in the boot mm-hmm. on eight inch wheels. And I think I think Gary just gambled and went into full slick. I went mm-hmm. out to the first stage then and was uh, was pissing rain. So we had a we had the slight advantage. The car wasn't still right, like but she was mm-hmm. near enough. She wasn't that far away. So we took four seconds and then into the second last stage, we're dead level, but it was drying. And I stayed in intermediates, and I was carrying two spare wheels as well. Mm-hmm. And then he uh, he took a second back out of us. We went into the last stage. Then at the start line, this is the eighteen miler. So I just fired. Every, Gart McCullough was doing the stage start control, so I threw out. So we changed the two spare wheels for into control because it was dry. Mm-hmm. So I think we we put. I think we left was on the front on the front, and then we put harder compounds in the back. Yes. And Jack's two kit jackets, anything we could out of all the water, <laughs> two spare wheels. Everything was fucked in the back. Gart McCullough's jeep. Excuse me, French. <laughs> And sure, McCullough's is at the same, like, so this is it, like, you know, uh-huh. down to the wire. And uh, he was running first car on the road, so he was off anyways, and sure. Uh-huh. We have in car of it, actually. Um, I don't think everyone's ever seen it, but we, did, we decided not to put up, put up. We put up stage seven, actually, because uh-huh. it was going to cut. But anyways, uh, we never put up that stage, but Jesus, now we were going well. Like, that was, I would say, about uh, halfway through the stage, then I started I started seeing Gary, and I used to, like, I started, in my head I was thinking there's no way I'm going this well like we were going yes, well but, but not, uh, quickly quickly realised he was carrying a problem and then yeah. so we were behind him I didn't know what was wrong so anyways we actually slowed up he had pulled in because he had seen us and I actually slowed down well enough because we had not enough gap and I gave him the thumbs up and then I sort of and just make sure there was nothing wrong but I didn't know but anyways we, I got some sort of a signal out the window from Mark mm-hmm. and we, we went so I think we still end up finishing the fastest time because Andrew was saying like, you need to keep your concentration keep your concentration mm-hmm. we were fast in the last stage and we won't end up winning like so mm-hmm. And then it transpired, Gary, I don't know what happened, but something in the suspension collapsed or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened exactly. Mm-hmm. I think he mm-hmm. rolled around to the finish anyways. But uh, but yeah, that was that was sort of the last big, uh, that was the last big thing on air of wish list, you know, because I think uh, yeah, the year before we had also won the Mark II Challenge, you see, in Carlo. So oh, that yes. was another big one. Oh, you had done it all, you had Carlo, and then you know, obviously won the Yeah, year, and we won the Ball of National. You know, mm-hmm. and Baron, they'd be going and do some of the national events and we'd try to win the national section. Now, that was really mm-hmm. winning Monon was, like, you know, it was Andrew says, I, I could ha- Andrew remember done the, we'd done a, a speech, you know, for in the rally at the end, and Andrew says, I can hang my boots up with that, I'd be happy enough, you know, but that was never <laughs> the plan. But, no. <laughs> but shortly shortly afterwards, that is actually when it ended up happening because um, mm-hmm. I think we went and done uh, Carlo then and we had none finish, and then Andrew decided he was going to Australia. Okay. So, and we had already sort of committed to doing Donegal. So that's how Arthur actually ended up sitting okay. me in Donegal in 2012. Yes. Uh-huh. So, uh, but what happened that time? We didn't, I think, the Crown Opinion wrong or something. Yes. Uh, we're uh-huh. going, I think we're leading the national again, but fourth or fifth stage, Crown Opinion went. So we we're out of the rally. Mm-hmm. But actually, we went back to Bobby's, put a new Crown Opinion back in, and we went out. I said to Arthur, I don't think I'm going to do any more rallies after this, you know. And Arthur says, What are you talking about? I goes, well, I'm just away to Australia. He says, so we're hard find it hard to justify the money that's been spent, and you know, without Andrew, I don't know if I'd be arsed to be honest with you. Um, mm-hmm. plus, what was it? I would see, I had come back home at that stage, so male fella had already lost a few ways away to Australia, and the business was getting busy, and I was getting more involved, and you know, mm-hmm. I just needed to reprioritize things, I think. Yeah. So, at that stage, I was like, 
I, I was happy enough to, you know, I remember uh, you have done it all, kind of thing. Yeah, I a couple <laughs> of guys saying, you know, the hardcore Donny Gall lads are saying, "What are you doing going back out on Saturdays? You're just putting males in the engine for no reason." I said, "I'm going out to enjoy myself because I said it to a few of them guys that morning, like you know, mm-hmm. Manus Mandy and a few of them boys, like, what are you at? Like, what you know, Mandy, you think maybe end up that you win the national that year? Yeah, I don't know. Definitely. But anyways, they had a good battle with Damien Geller. They all thought I was still mad, like putting males in the car, like you know, you should keep saving the car." And like in my head, I wasn't going to be back out anytime soon. And yeah, this was your last run, nearly. Like, ah, so it, me and Arthur's in it for a bit of crack, like, and still, we didn't spend any money on tires, just used up wherever I had. I think we still set some fast times or whatever, but mm-hmm. had a bit of crack, like. Yes. <laughs> but out of that, you, but out of that, then between Monathan and that, you got nominated for the Billy Coleman Award again. Yeah. I suppose you thought, yeah. here we go again, nearly kind of thing, did you? That, honestly, that was a case, eh? Mm-hmm. Um, if you. If I'm honest, what I did was I got the portfolio I had the year before, which I put a lot of effort into copying pieces in the different dates, uh, mm-hmm. more or less the same plan. Um, and I suppose I had learned at this stage, you know, what was needed to be said. And and I also knew that there wasn't, like they knew that we didn't have the money and I didn't have the money, but I had this plan about a fundraiser event. I don't know where I come up with it. Maybe mm-hmm. somebody else had done this code driver thing where, you know, you could potentially raise good money. But anyways, honestly, in December or whatever it was, I got shortlisted. I think I'd been shortlisted two or three times at this stage. And mm-hmm. sure, I was used to going up to the motorsport, the Dunlop Motorsport Awards. And mm-hmm. never really, not that I was coming back disappointed because I never expected to win. So it didn't matter. Yeah. But um, but anyways, to our surprise, I can't remember who was shortlisted along with us. We won it anyways, which honestly wasn't part of the plan. <laughs> I had to try and plan things in the But anyways... Um, so then, so then we had to give it a lash. <laughs> what we're going to do now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> The difference was now, this time Andrew was in Australia, and yes. I was sort of on my own. I was like, what, jeez, am I going to do now? So the first thing was, uh, yeah, so anyways, we celebrated with the Billy Coleman, because that was obviously a yeah, major big achievement, big the young yeah. rally driver of the year and whatever, even though I only done four events, you know. Uh-huh. I only done eight events in two years. That's just the way it went. 